Well guys, it's finally here. After months of waiting, we finally have ourselves the very first trailer for the third season of Prehistoric Planet. And what can I say, this thing looks beautiful. So let's not waste any time and get straight into discussing it. Before I dive in, if you haven't already, make sure to watch the official trailer on Apple TV's YouTube channel. This way we can show them that we all want content like this in the future. I'll put a link in the description down below. But without further ado, let's go. The very first animal on display here is a woolly mammoth against a fierce snowstorm. The animal's a bit obscured in this shot, but we'll see more of him going forward, so don't worry. This is quickly followed by a pack of what seem to be Homotherium, and according to the official press releases, these are in fact a species of Homotherium, though apparently from the United States. Following this is a quick scene of a Megalonyx in the snow, which we've already seen a good amount of from the official clip. Next up, we see those dwarf elephants teased in earlier press material. That said, this isn't Paleoloxodon falconeri, as me and several other guys had assumed, Instead, this is apparently Stegodon, an elephant found in Southeast Asia in countries such as Indonesia and the Philippines. Dwarf Stegodons ranged in size from slightly taller than a man to coming slightly above waist level. Regardless, what we see here looks to be smaller than that, so we might be dealing with a baby. Knowing this series' is history with infants, let's hope things end up okay. But let's move right along into this group of kangaroos. Now immediately, my mind went to Procoptodon, the short-faced kangaroo of the Pleistocene. And this animal may very well be Procoptodon, but apparently we'll also be seeing carnivorous kangaroos as well. Now this is where my lack of bird knowledge really comes into play, since I had to look up what this animal was. This is evidently a Leptotelos robustus, which is a giant stork that lived in Southeast Asia, so expect this thing to be in the same episode as Stegodon. This is followed by a shot of a baby Glyptodon just walking along. We'll see more of this guy's group later. Now this next animal could be big. Not in the literal sense, but more in what it implies. When I first saw this creature flash by, I figured it was some kind of cat, but looking closer, I think this actually might be a cave fusa. Now for those of you guys who don't know, the fusa is Madagascar's largest predator, but up until very, very recently, potentially slightly before the 1400s, we had an even larger species from the same genus. Now again, this fella is not super big, maxing out at about 44 pounds, but if this animal is a fusa, it all but confirms we're getting a Madagascar episode. Hopefully we get some giant lemurs as well. Next up, we've got this little lizard, followed by a peculiar looking bird. Honestly, I'm not sure what the animal is. The beak shape here is very interesting though. If you guys have any idea, please let me know. After that, we get a few shots of woolly mammoths and woolly rhinos, which are always nice to see. And I believe this animal over here is also Homotherium, though it'd have to be a Eurasian species. So including the American Homotherium, and one we'll see later, that brings us to three species for this genus. Next up, we've got more mammoths but this time in a more savanna-esque environment, then up in a dust storm or a sandstorm of all things. One of the themes of this series is the change in climate and environment that happens between the end Pleistocene and the Holocene, so it seems that mammoths might be our vessels to experience this firsthand. But now we've got some more birds. The first looks to be the giant moa, which confirms a New Zealand episode. The next is apparently an elephant bird, so Madagascar is 1 million percent confirmed. Now here's a curious animal. I believe this is a Megatherium, though it could be a similarly sized Eremotherium. What's interesting here though is that this guy seems to be lacking quite a bit of hair, looking a lot like those naked chimp photos I've sometimes seen posted. Larger animals like elephants and rhinos do tend to not have as much fur, though this is the first time I've ever seen a sloth depicted like this. This next animal is most likely a Lidopterm, a family of hoofed animals that lived in South America that aren't super closely related to any of the hoofed animals we have today. That said, I don't think it's the super popular Lidopterne Macrocania. Now, like an idiot, I went typing Xenotherium into Google to confirm this, but the animal's actual name seems to be Xenorhinotherium, and they're really going in with the rhino part of its name, showing how weird its nasal region looked and operated. And here we have a very cool animal, what can only be the stellar sea cow. This is another super, super recently extinct animal, only disappearing in 1768. It's so cool that we'll be seeing animals that died out in the Holocene here so hopefully we see the dodo as well. Now this next shot contains two very interesting animals. The first we've seen before, that being what I incorrectly identified as a Smilodon in an earlier video, but is in fact an African Homotherium. Africa was one of the places I was most intrigued to see here, if only because I could barely come up with anything they could actually show on that continent. But to no surprise, the team working on this show is way smarter and more creative than me, so we have a fight here between Homotherium and another carnivore. I had to take a close look to find out what kind of animal this is, but it seems to be some sort of giant otter. And apparently this is a Pleistocene genus known as Anhydriodon. These guys could get really big, up to 440 pounds. The thing is though, this animal died out about 2 million years ago, 
So how early into the Pleistocene are we actually going to take this show? We then get another shot of Stegodon, clearly an adult this time, and then a family of Glyptodons and Megalonyx. We then get another Glyptodont, though this time it's the spike-tailed Didacurus. These next shots go by super fast, but we see a Megaloceros jumping, followed by what seems to be a baby kangaroo evading a monitor lizard, maybe a Megalania, a Thylacaleo or Marsupial Lion dropping from a tree, and then those climbing slots we saw in earlier material getting attacked by a bird. Next up seems to be another shot of those climbing slots, but this time in the dark, followed by a giant marsupial. I think this is Diprudodon, though it looks a lot leaner than what I'm used to. We've then got a homotherium attacking a mammoth, similar to that scene we saw with the cave lions in Life on Our Planet. Now I thought this was a cave lion as well, given the longer tail, but I guess this is also homotherium. So all in all, a fantastic trailer. If I had any doubts prior to this, they've all been quelled. The variety of animals and environment is more than I've ever seen in a documentary surrounding this time period. And what's more, it seems that our time frame is actually way larger than we could have possibly expected. The latest Pleistocene was chock full of fauna, but if we're really going back as far as 1 or 2 million years, there's even more we could see. Gigantopithecus, the giant giraffe relative Shivatherium, and the list goes on. And I was just about to end the video here, but apparently we've got even more photos on Apple TV's website. The photos are organized on an episode by episode basis, and for the first we've got the confirmation of two new species, the dire wolf and the Colombian mammoth, which looks to be on the road to becoming a tar victim. As for the direwolf, I love the design, and I wonder if the team's going to be taking steps to making it look more distinct from regular modern wolves, since this animal wasn't actually a true wolf at all. Alright, so I'm writing the script while looking at these new images, but good god are we so unbelievably back. This next episode confirms the one-horned Elasmotherium, though its horn is more of a boss here. Actually, this is apparently how the animal would have looked like in real life, which makes sense given its fossils. But the real thing I've got my eyes on is this magnificent creature. Gigantopithecus, the largest ape ever, will be in this show. I couldn't be happier, and it looks like this rendition is taking some elements from both gorillas and orangutans, while not leaning too much into the appearance of either. This is one of the most unique designs I've ever seen for the ape, and I'm glad we'll be seeing it in such an early episode. Another quick note though, what I had earlier called a homotherium is actually a saber-toothed tiger. So apparently scratch whatever I said earlier about it being a scimitar-toothed cat. I'd edit the earlier part of the video to reflect this, but I'd rather not be dishonest about what a dummy I actually am. But it's interesting they're going with the old school saber-toothed tiger naming scheme here, instead of the saber-toothed cat name that's far more accurate. The next episode shows us Megalania, an animal everyone was waiting for, as well as confirming those kangaroos are indeed Procoptodon, and that big marsupial is probably Diprudodon. This batch of episode images comes with its share of new animals as well. First of all is a far more robust Smilodon, though interestingly now it's called the saber-toothed cat. So what's the deal here? Is this Smilodon populator and the other guys Fatalis or Gracilis or something? So they're using different informal names? Regardless, this in particular is an 11 out of 10 design, pure unadulterated Kino. And we've got some more South American animals. First off is the confirmation of this giant sloth actually being a Remotherium as well as a forest rocket and the giant bear Arctotherium angustidens. Both designs look phenomenal, there's nothing much else to say. Oh yeah, and we also have a squirrel. Alright everybody, we got the final images for the final episode, so let's see what we got. Okay, so no new animals, but we do see another Smilodon, definitely not Populator. And I think I know what happened now. That shot of Smilodon we saw from the trailer was smash cut against another different scene of Homotherium fighting the otters, so that's why I got fooled. And I'm only now realizing this, but apparently I read these episodes in reverse order. So what we have here is actually a chronological series, with the first episodes covering stuff like the freezing of the planet, and the connection of the Panamanian land bridge, all the way to the end of the Holocene. Great stuff. But what do you guys think of the trailer? Let me know in the comments, and don't forget to subscribe, as we've almost reached 100,000 subscribers. I'll see you all next time.